I ended up using more beakers than they mentioned. So I need a hot sauce packet. Um, they have a bottle of sodium hydroxide, which has a concentration of 0.1 moles per liter, a 30 milliliter syringe. I used a lot of beakers here, so you can grab those from your kit. A 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. You're also gonna need a plastic or a barrel pipette. You're also gonna need this pH meter and this little balance. You have to calibrate the pH meter before you start using it. So you're gonna need a quarter to open the, the back. You just twist it to the right. You're gonna see there's this little rubber seal, this O-ring, make sure that that doesn't fall out. So you have two batteries, right? You'll notice one side is flat and has a plus sign on it. That's gonna go face up. Same thing with the other one. Then go ahead and twist it to the left to make sure that it's closed. Then you just have to press the start button or on. So this pH meter, it has um, a glass bulb which is porous and needs to be stored in this salt solution at all times, except for when you're using it. You don't want it to dry out, and so whenever you're not using it, make sure it's in there. If for some reason it was laying out, it needs to soak in this salt solution for at least 10 minutes before you use it. So we're going to calibrate it using these three buffers that come with your kit. These act as reference solutions so that the pH meter knows, okay, this is what a pH 4 solution looks like, this is what a 7 solution looks like. And the instructions are in this booklet that come with your pH meter. So you're just going to perform a standard calibration. Your kit comes with these three buffer solutions that should be used to calibrate the pH meter. So we have a pH 7, a pH 4, and a pH 10. So we're going to be doing a three-point calibration. This is even better than what we do in person in Fullerton where we normally just do a two-point calibration. So to make this easier, I'm going to pour them into these little beakers that I've labeled. And it's really cool because they add um, coloring so that you can easily tell the difference between these buffers. So typically the pH 4 buffer is kind of this pink color. The pH 7 is yellow. I bet you can guess what the pH 10 is. Purple! Just kidding, it's blue. Ordinarily, when you're done with these, you wouldn't pour them back into these bottles because you might contaminate it for everyone else. But since these are your bottles, feel free to pour them back in when you're done. So we want to be able to rinse this pH meter off with distilled water after every single solution. But we don't have a wash bottle, so I'm improvising. I put some DI water into this beaker. Um, you want to put kind of a lot so that it's dilute. This isn't ideal, by the way, because you don't want to contaminate the pH meter, but since I don't have a wash bottle, it's the best I could do right now. Since this glass electrode is sensitive to ions, you do want to use distilled water and not tap water. I don't know if you can see, but there's a glass bulb on the bottom that's very sensitive and fragile, so you don't want to touch it. You don't want to scrub it with a paper towel. You want to be really careful. Don't bang it against anything. When you rinse it, you want to wipe off the outside and then just carefully dab the bottom. Do not scrub it with the paper towel like this. This glass electrode is how this pH meter works, so we have to be careful with it. So first, start out with the pH 7 buffer. Make sure that that glass bulb is totally immersed under the solution, even if you have to tilt the beaker. And then you're just gonna press this calibrate button. It's gonna recognize that you're looking at a pH uh, 7 buffer, so it'll say seven on the face. 
And then I messed up here because you're supposed to wait until you get the message SA and then it will say end when it's done. So I'm going to have to calibrate this one more time. So press the calibrate button. It'll say seven. Then I just have to be patient this time. So sorry it's cut off, but what it says is SA and then it says end, then I'm okay to take it out. So in between solutions, I want to make sure that I rinse it off. Dab it gently, wipe off the outside. Then we're going to use the pH 4 buffer. So once again, press calibrate. I know it's cut off, but what it says is 4. Then it's going to say SA. When it's done, it'll say end. It's not ideal to be dipping it in this same container of distilled water each time because I could be contaminating it, but I'm assuming that there's not a lot of liquid on the electrode that I'm rinsing off. It's much better if we had a wash bottle to rinse it. All right, I'm gonna repeat the last, uh, repeat everything with the last buffer. So press calibrate. It's going to automatically say 10. And I know it looks like I'm pressing the button down, but my finger is just sitting there. You don't have to hold down the calibration button. And then we're ready to go. So cut the corner off of your hot sauce packet. You're gonna get your balance ready, so you can turn it on. Put your 250 milliliter beaker on the balance and press tear, that will zero it. Then we're gonna put a pipette into the hot sauce. You wanna squeeze it first, just like a regular pipette, and then suck up the hot sauce to the top mark that's on the skinny part of this pipette. It doesn't have to be exact because we're gonna weigh it Then squirt out as much of it as you can into this beaker and you're going to record the mass. Make sure you record all the digits. Now the first time I did this, I screwed up and I put the whole hot sauce packet in this beaker. So that's why it looks like there's so much in there. Make sure you only use one milliliter of hot sauce, okay? All right, you're gonna add 20 milliliters of distilled water. This is not my rinsing solution. This is a totally fresh beaker of distilled water. It doesn't need to be exact, okay, but close to 20 milliliters. Speaking of hot sauce solution, have you ever seen that movie Peanut Butter Solution? If not, I definitely wouldn't watch it. It'll give you nightmares. That's just my recommendation. It's called the children's movie that traumatized a generation. Okay, so they say to mix this up with a stir rod, but I found that that really wasn't necessary. So I just went ahead and swirled it. Then you wanna measure the pH of your solutions to start. So you're putting your, you're just pouring that bottle of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide into this beaker and writing down the pH. Okay, then I'm gonna do the same thing with my hot sauce solution. You just need to wait a second for it to stabilize. 
Your pH might be different because mine is more concentrated than yours will be. It really smells like a toxic concoction. You probably want to have good ventilation so that you're not uh, tempted to sneeze. Wow, so it's six months later and the procedure has changed a little bit. Instead of a syringe, you're going to be using this graduated pipette. Um, here I have my hot sauce solution. Here I have my 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide and a beaker for waste. I've already calibrated the pH meter. And yes, I have been wearing this sweatshirt the entire time, so it's a little bit worse for wear. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use this pipette. First of all, it's graduated, meaning that it has multiple marks on it. At the top, it says zero, and then the marks will tell you how much that you uh, solution you've dispensed. So you wanna start at the zero and either drain it all the way if you wanna add one milliliter, or if you want to add less than one milliliter, you'll drain to that mark. It also says the uncertainty is within plus or minus 0 0.02. So you should be able to measure to two decimal places the volume. Most graduated pipettes, the bottom mark would be the final volume, for example, one milliliter. So you would only want to dispense to that mark and not let it drain all the way. However, this one, the last mark is 0.9 milliliters. So you would want to drain it all the way if you wanted to add one milliliter of sodium hydroxide to the hot sauce solution. So this is a two-way bulb. It's got a valve that says S for suction. That's if you want to suction liquid up or air. And then there's another valve that says E, which is if you want to empty. So first of all, press the S valve while you squeeze the bulb so that that way it's ready to suction up the liquid. Place it on top of the pipette. And then you always want to, well, usually rinse your pipette with distilled water first just to remove any contamination that was there before. I've already done that step. Second of all, you would want to condition the pipette which with, with whatever solution is going to be in there. So make sure that the bulb is squeezed and then you're gonna use the S valve to suction liquid up into the pipette. Be careful that it doesn't go into the bulb. Then press E to empty the solution into the waste. You're going to do this a couple of times just to make sure that whatever solution or contamination is in the pipette is replaced with the solution that's going to be in there. You want to get your pH meter ready by rinsing it off with distilled water. Remember to remove the excess water from the outside and to dab it lightly. So I've already measured the initial pH of both of my solutions and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by pipetting one milliliter of sodium hydroxide into the hot sauce solution. And after each addition of the sodium hydroxide, I want to measure the pH. Make sure you press E to empty all the solution out. There will be a little bit left in the tip, that's okay. Once you add the sodium hydroxide, swirl to mix, and then you're gonna take the pH. You may have to tilt the beaker so that the glass bulb on the bottom of the pH meter is completely immersed in the solution. Once it's stable, go ahead and tap off the extra liquid, and then you wanna write down the pH and the total volume of sodium hydroxide that's been added. So it'll be one milliliter, two milliliter, etc. 
Then just repeat. Now, before you ask, no, you're not hand drawing your pH titration curves, but I just wanna show you something to make a point. So on the left, we have a pH titration curve where we've added one milliliter of sodium hydroxide at a time and measured the pH. Note that around the equivalence point, the pH uh, increases so rapidly that if you add one milliliter, you miss uh, some parts of the curve when you graph it. On the right hand side, on the other hand, we have a pH titration curve that we've made where as we get closer to the equivalence point, we've added smaller additions of sodium hydroxide, less than one milliliter. This will allow you to carve out that little round portion at the bottom and the top of the curve surrounding the equivalence point, which will give you a more accurate looking pH titration curve. In order to achieve this, what you wanna do is probably around three milliliters added, you wanna go down to a smaller volume and that's up to you. But I would say the maximum would be 0.5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. The way you do this is you will draw up solution to the meniscus that's at the zero mark and then dispense to the 0.5 milliliter mark on the pipette or whichever volume you want to add if it's smaller than 0.5 milliliters. You'll want to continue this way until approximately nine or 10 milliliters of base has been added or until the pH stops increasing rapidly around maybe 11 and a half or 12. You'll want to get a few more volumes. You can add one milliliter at a time after that, just to make sure you've covered the excess region of your curve. Before cleaning up, you may want to go ahead and graph your curve to make sure that it looks all right because if it doesn't, you have enough solution to do another one if you need to. To clean up, make sure that you rinse your pipette well with distilled water, and you can put all your solutions down the sink with lots of water. Rinse the pH meter off with distilled water as well, and place it back in its salt solution in the container that it came in.